and will continue to do. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, two verses, amen, 57 and 58. But thanks be unto God, which has given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Thank you, Paul, for giving us those two inspiring scriptures Verses 57 and 58 coming from the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Spiritual lessons we can learn from sports. Spiritual lessons we can learn from sports. Union, it has been said that presently in this country, this nation known as America, football is by far head and shoulders the most popular sport that men and even women keep up with. Basketball comes in a distant second, then baseball. Nobody even knows that the Washington Nationals won the World Series a few days ago. But when I was a little boy in elementary school, the teachers would bring their radios and they would put the lessons on hold and we would sit there and listen to Mickey Mantle going up against Sandy Koufax. But baseball fell by the wayside, especially among African Americans. And football and basketball have become the number one and two sports that they keep up with. Golf and tennis is beginning to catch on also. And dare we not remind you that whereas soccer over in other countries is the most popular sport, it is beginning to also catch on in America. But let the record show that right now in this culture, in this land known as America, when it comes to recreation and keeping up with professional and college sports, football is by far the number one sport. And let the record show that not only from football, but other sports, there are many valuable spiritual lessons that you and I can learn that we can apply to our Christian walk with Jesus as well as our Christian activities. Allow me to confess, first of all, that when Paul gave us 1 Corinthians 15, 57, and 58, he did not have sports in mind. He was simply reminding us as he talked throughout that chapter about the resurrection of Jesus Christ and how you and I have this great hope and expectation that we too, when we leave this world and our bodies are buried in the ground, that our spirits will live on and that one day the trumpet will sound and we will live again. So let the record show in 1 Corinthians 15, Paul was talking about the fact that Jesus rose from the dead and then he climaxed it in verse 57 by saying, thanks be to God that he has given us the victory. Underline that word victory because that's what sports is all about. It's about winning 
And Paul wants us to know that we are winners in Christ. Matter of fact, Moses said he has made you the head and not the tail. Y'all better talk to me. And that's good news to me this morning as we rejoice on this Jersey Sunday that, that we are victorious in Christ Jesus. Amen. One day the devil will be destroyed forevermore. And we won't have to contend with his foolishness. And we'll live with Christ forever. And there'll be no more death, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more sickness, no more cancer. Every day somebody said we'll be like Sunday. God has given us the victory. Give him a hand clap of praise. That's good news to me. Amen. I'm a winner. I'm not a loser. Amen. I can walk with my head up high because Christ did it on Calvary. And after he died and went in the grave, that third day morning, he got up with resurrection power and said, all power has been given to me on heaven and on earth. So with that word victory in front of us, there are some lessons that we can learn from the wonderful world of sports. One lesson we can learn, if you're keeping notes, is how to deal with adversity through sports. We can learn a spiritual lesson of how to deal with adversity. Players get injured. Isn't it strange that just a few years ago, Golden State was on top of the world basketball kings then Durant decided to check out and move on uh, Clay Evans got hurt and can't play for the whole year and just the other night Steph Curry broke his hand and he's pretty much out for the whole year and so now we're looking at a three time championship team about to come in last place Amen. And have the rights to a top draft pick. Isn't it strange how in life things can be so good one minute? I'm trying to help somebody this morning. Isn't it strange how you can be on the top of the mountain? Amen. One day and the next day, amen, life throws you a curveball and you're down in the valley. If there's a one lesson we can learn from sports is how to deal with adversity because in this world, God said, you gonna have some trials and some tribulation. I got good news for you this morning. Every day ain't gonna be Sunday. Every day ain't gonna be a sunny day. Sometime it's gonna cloud up in your life and it's gonna rain and rain and rain. But I heard Paul say, be ye steadfast oh I'm gonna preach this thing this morning be ye steadfast unmovable oh every now and then you got to dig in the trenches and say devil take your best shot because I ain't going nowhere sometimes you're gonna have adversity in your family Amen. Puppy love is going to turn into a dog fight. Sometimes your children are going to go astray. Sometimes you're going to have financial difficulty. Advert. Isn't it strange in the world of football, basketball, players become free agents and leave? Amen. Uh, players get traded. Amen. Coaches get fired. All of that's a reflection, amen, of life. Sometimes good members get sick, amen, and they're hardly ever seen again. Sometimes, like coaches, brother deacons, pastors get fired. Don't y'all start thinking crazy now. Hallelujah, somebody. Sometimes members become free agents, 
and they move their membership. Teach that thing, Stanley. Amen. Just like in football, you have free agents, you have injuries, you have sickness, coaches get fired. You can see that same thing going on many times in the life of a church. The Falcons were predicted, amen, by many sports magazines to make the playoffs with all that offensive firepower. Some had even said that they were a dark horse candidate to make it to the Super Bowl. Nobody saw one in seven. Nobody, not even their worst enemies, would have thought if you had told me after eight games that the Falcons would be one and seven with Julio and Matt Ryan and that entire team, I would have said, you're crazy. I would have said, you better reverse that. Amen. And they'll be seven and one. But they too, amen, have had some unexpected things that have come their way. I hate to announce their funeral services <laughs> will be next Saturday at 11 o'clock. But I'm not finished. I'm not finished. The Pittsburgh Steelers are on life support. <laughs> they on life support. Amen. Go ahead and send, go ahead and send out a sympathy card to Larry Reynolds and the Cleveland Brian. They did too. But Paul said, "Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always." abounding in the work of the law for as much as you may know your labor amen is not in vain so the first lesson that we can learn from the world of sports be it football basketball baseball is how to deal with adversity because things are not going to always go the way you expected them Many of you started out the year 2019, you were excited, you were believing that this was going to be your year, and all of a sudden the wheels start falling off one by one. And now here we are, the first of November, and you're struggling, amen, trying to make something out of a year, amen, that has gone bad. Life can be that way. Fear with adversity. The second thing we can learn, amen, from sports is that many times a devil spirit will destroy a team. The word devil is often used many times to destroy a female that has it going on in a whole lot of ways. And people will refer to her as a diva. Amen. But that diva spirit can be a dangerous spirit. If the person that has it allows it to go to their head, there's nothing wrong with having confidence in oneself. But when one positions themselves to believe that everything rises and falls on them, then that devil spirit can destroy a team. It can destroy a church. Not too long ago, once again, amen, and I loved that movie, The Temptations, and it was on television, and I st uh, stayed right there on my sofa and watched it for the tenth time. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. And I saw where David Ruffin, amen, put himself, amen, above the best of the group, and he wanted them to change the name of the group from The Temptations to David Ruffin. And the temptation. He had a terrible diva spirit. And even though, amen, his replacement uh, did a pretty good job, who knows how far the temptations could have gone if they had not to fire David Ruffin, amen, because of his spirit and his mentality that he was better, amen, than the group. I do, however, give him credit. Because later on in life, he produced a powerful song, amen, as a soloist entitled, amen, The Stature of a Fool. And I would recommend that you Google that song because in that song, he admitted, 
amen, that he had made a fool out of himself, number one, with the woman that he let got away. Amen, because he had a good woman in his life. Amen, but he messed up a good thing. And so he said, build a statue, put a teardrop under the eye, and call it the statue of a fool and put my name on it because I want the whole world to know I messed up a good thing with a good woman as well as the temptation. I'm here to tell you that repentance is good for the soul. When a man or a woman can get down the road and say, Lord, have mercy, I made a mistake. Nobody but me ain't going to blame it on nobody else. It was my own foolishness. Oh, that's a powerful man. That's a powerful woman. But unfortunately, many times that diva spirit that exists in sports, amen, in entertainment can creep into the church. And all of a sudden, you'll see diva spirit. Don't y'all get quiet now. All in the church. Sometimes it's the pastor who has put himself in a position of believing that nothing can run, that the whole church is built upon his mentality and his personality and so forth. And he's the star of the show. Amen. He needs 15 armor bearers to follow him from point A to point B. He needs somebody to stand right by him while he's preaching and wipe the sweat from his eyes and the back of his head. Amen. He needs somebody to drive him everywhere that he goes, even around the corner to CVS. Y'all better talk to me. That's a dangerous spirit when a pastor can allow himself to believe that he's bigger than Jesus. Watch this. Ain't it sad that some folk can touch Jesus but can't touch the pastor? Y'all will catch that. Amen. Y'all will catch that when you get home. Jesus mingled with folk. He mingled with sinners. He mingled with alcoholics. He mingled with drug addicts. He mingled with prostitutes. He didn't have no, amen, bodyguards pushing folk out the way and saying don't touch them. But yet, there are some pastors get so high and mighty, can't nobody get near them. Can't nobody even shake their hand. That's a diva spirit. But wait a minute, sometime that diva spirit gets in the choir. Hallelujah, somebody. The devil got kicked out of heaven because he was a choir leader. Y'all ain't going to talk to me this morning. And sometimes you have folks in the choir want to dog every song, want to hold every song. Amen. Can't nobody sing but you. I dog devil, you a lie. Sometimes that diva spirit gets in the deacon's ministry. Can't nobody lead a hymn but you. No, my brothers and sisters, God is too good to let his goodness just fall on one person. Sometimes that diva spirit gets out in the sanctuary and you have female members claiming to be Miss Union Baptists. Every time a new member comes in, they pull them aside and say, you want to get anything done, you got to go through me. No, honey, child, you better go through Jesus. Y'all better talk to me. I'm moving on. Let me say it this way, and I'll leave this diva spirit. Union Baptist is 126 years old, and one thing that tells me, I don't know about you, but one thing that tells me, Reverend Stanley, it was here before you got here. This is a personal testimony. I've been here 32 years, but I don't have no diva spirit. I know but by the grace of God, the fact that Union Baptist is 126 years old it tells me that the church was here before you got here and brought right. It's going to be here when I'm dead and gone. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. Amen. Hopefully I've done enough that when I'm dead and gone, you'll name at least one small room after me. <laughs> so that when a new cry come along, They'll know I've been on duty. But I'm wise enough to know God is too smart 
to allow his church to rise and fall on one man or one woman. So my brothers and sisters, let's get rid of these diva attitudes. You don't always have to have the best seat in the house. You don't always have to have the best parking space. You don't always have to have the best food and everything else. Just be a servant of the law. Divas want to be first every time. I don't mind getting to the back of the line. I, did you hear what I said? I don't mind getting into the back of the line. When I'm not on program, I don't have to be in the pulpit. I've seen preachers knock one another over. Amen. At funerals. Sit yourself down. You ain't on program. Get on out there with everybody here. I ain't but three chairs up there and you trying to take one of them. Get out of the way. Hallelujah, somebody. Paul said, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. If there's one thing that would tap a church quicker than anything, it is too many diva spirits. I could talk about Antonio Bryan and how he pretty much destroyed Mike Tomlin as a football coach and demanded to be traded because he had that diva mentality. Then he went to the Oakland Raiders, acted the fool over there because he had a diva mentality. I will give him the benefit of the doubt of being accused of raping his trainer. Because I find it hard to believe that you can rape a woman in 2017 and she come back and work for you in 2018. Y'all better talk to me. That's all I'm going to say about that. So I give him the benefit of the doubt of perhaps not being guilty as charged with having raped his trainer. But it's obvious he's got a mental problem in that he thinks he's a football diva. And that nobody can catch the football, amen, but him. But I want to remind you, amen, Tara Orange came before you. Uh, I want to remind you that Jerry Rice came before you. I want to remind you that Randy Moss came before you. Y'all looking at me like I'm from Mars. And all I'm trying to tell you, men been catching footballs for as long as football been going on. And when you dead and gone, they're going to still be playing and catching football. It's a dangerous thing when a man or woman sets themselves up to believe that nothing good can happen unless they are in charge of it, unless they are the star of the show. I'm out of here now, but there ain't but one star, amen, in the church, and that's none other than Jesus himself. Amen. I know I'm right about it because when the wise men were looking for the child, the Bible said there was one star. All out, y'all to catch that when you get home. There was one star, amen, that led them to Bethlehem. Not three stars, not five stars. It was but one star that led them from the east to the west. And when they find Jesus, the star was shining over the house, letting them know it was the Christ Jesus. Stay away from evil spirits. They are too dangerous for any child of God, amen, to possess. And then lastly, the last lesson that we can learn, amen, from the sports world, and that is teamwork. Teamwork. Every player, amen, has a position to play. Did you hear what I said? I said every player, amen, has a position to play. I'm reminded of a little boy who went out to play football for his little league team. And the little boy wanted to play quarterback. But the coach pulled him aside and said, I'm afraid you're not tall enough. Amen. You're too, amen, hefty per se. Amen. Quarterback is not your position. He said, well, coach, let me be the running back. And the coach said, yeah, you're not fast enough. I need somebody fast and swift 
he had to play running back he said well coach let me play wide receiver once again the coach had to hug him and said little boy yeah you're not tall enough uh, you're not fast enough yeah to play wide receiver but he said to the little boy I got a position for you and that position is center you got the right size you got the right amen demeanor I want you to hike the ball and I want you to know the play cannot start until you hike the ball somebody ought to say hallelujah the little boy went home shouting the daddy said I guess you made the team he said yes daddy I made the team he said you're gonna play quarterback he said no daddy I'm not gonna play quarterback he said you're gonna play running back he said no daddy I'm not gonna play running back he he said, well, uh, I guess you're going to be a wide receiver. He said, no, daddy, the coach said uh, I was not fast enough to be a man, a wide receiver. The father scratched his head uh, and said, well, little boy, uh, what position are you going to play? Uh, the little boy said, daddy, uh, the coach talked to me uh, and he told me uh, he needed a good center. He needed some Somebody, uh, who could listen to the quarterback's voice uh, and hike the ball uh, at the right time uh, and once I hike the ball uh, I've got to block uh, and keep other players uh, from tackling the quarterback uh, ain't the Lord alright uh, and that's all I'm trying to tell you this morning uh, some of you all uh, are playing the wrong position uh, you're looking for positions uh, of glory you're looking for positions uh, that's gonna make you shine uh, but all I want to leave with you uh, is let the Lord uh, put you where he wants you to be uh, ain't the Lord all right? uh, and if you play your position uh, and I play my position uh, and they play their position uh, and they play their position uh, and the deacons play their position uh, and the mothers play their position uh, we can win uh, ain't the Lord all right? uh, we can win uh, thanks be to God uh, that then gave us the victory uh, the good day union uh, God bless your soul uh, be steadfast uh, unmovable uh, always uh, abounding in the Lord uh, did you hear what I said uh, be uh, steadfast uh, unmovable uh, always uh, abounding in the Lord uh, for your labor uh, shall not be in vain uh, you pick me up uh, and I'll pick you up uh, you pray for me uh, and I'll pray for you uh, when you cry uh, all of us will cry uh, ain't the Lord alright that's teamwork uh, let's love uh, everybody love everybody that's teamwork pray for everybody that's teamwork ain't the Lord all right say yeah yeah oh, yeah thank you Lord